The first unit in Algebra 2 is function families. You have to be able to identify as a, if a function is linear or a line, if a function is an absolute value or a V-shaped, or if the function is a quadratic, this is also called a parabola, its shape is parabolic. This is a linear function. In addition to identifying the family of the function, you have to know what the domain and range are. Domain is given by the x values on the graph. This graph goes to the left forever and to the right forever, so its domain is all real numbers. The double lines on the capital R are the symbol mathematically for real numbers. If you look at the same graph, but you look at this graph from bottom to top as if you were climbing up a ladder. This graph rises up forever and it also goes down forever, so its range is also all real numbers. The next function you have to identify is an absolute value function. An absolute value function is given by f of x equals the absolute value of x. Now, if I were the person standing on the x-axis, walking to the left or walking to the right, the graph goes on forever. So the domain of an absolute value function is given by all real numbers. But if I were the person on the ladder trying to figure out the range, as I start climbing up the graph, the graph doesn't actually start till right there at y equals zero. So the range is given by y is greater than or equal to zero. This is a quadratic function. Its equation is given by f of x equals x squared. It's also called a parabola. And its shape is considered parabolic. Once again, if you were going along the x-axis, walking to the left or walking to the right, the graph goes on forever. So its domain is all real numbers. But if you were the person crawling on the ladder, working your way up the graph, the graph doesn't start till right there. And it goes up forever. And so its range is given by y is greater than or equal to zero. The function families we will deal with the most in the first unit are linear, absolute value, and quadratic. In addition, you'll see a couple other families, like the radical family, and a constant, which is a horizontal line. One important fact about a constant is that its slope is going to be zero. An important fact about the radical function is it only has positive values because the absolute value is defined as the positive answers that solve the problem. For example, if you had took the square root of 25, you would only have positive 5 for an answer. You would not also have negative 5. Most of the questions on your unit quiz and on your unit test will be about transformations. The first transformation we're going to look at is a vertical shift. So I'm going to start with a function family, f of x equals x, that's a linear function. And the linear function, f of x equals x, is this line. If I were to change that function, and I were to take the f of x function and add 3 to it, and get a new function, g of x is equal to x plus 3, then what would happen to the graph is this 3 that's after the x would move the entire graph up 3. It would start at 3, it would have the same slope, it would be going in the same direction. The only thing that happens is if you add a number after the x value, it can move it up if it's positive, it can move it down if it's negative. Here's another example of a vertical shift. If I were to take the parabolic function, f of x equals x squared, and shift it down 4, 
my new function, g of x, the point here would go down to negative 4, the point here at 1 would go down 4, the point here would go down 4, and your new function, g of x, would be the same as the original function, just move down 4. This function right here is called the parent function, and the function down here is called the transformation. Another word for a vertical shift is called a translation, and you are welcome to use either vocabulary on your quiz. The second main type of transformation is also considered a translation, but it's a translation that moves a graph to the left or to the right. This is easier to look at with absolute value and functions and parabolas, so we'll take a look at the function f of x equals the absolute value of x. This is v-shaped. It goes through 0, 0, and 1, 1, and 2, 2. And I kind of think of it like this. Absolute value means it has to be positive. So here I'm flying along, flying along. I get to the zero, I'm like, ouch, I can't be negative, and I just bounce right back up and go in the positive direction. Now, if I were to transform this function by putting a number inside with x, so let's say I wanted to find the function g of x given by the function f of x minus 2. So I'm going to take the x minus 2 and substitute it in where the x is. So my g function is going to be the absolute value of x minus 2. Now this is a little bit tricky because if the number is inside, it always does the opposite of what you might think. Or how I think about it is I look right here and I ask myself what value would make that equal to zero? the value that would make that equal to zero is a positive two. So I take this vertex and I shift it to the right two and I draw the same graph. Again, translations left or right are a little bit harder because what you're thinking about is what would make it equal to zero because what would make it equal to zero is how far it moves left or right. Another common transformation is a vertical shrink or a vertical stretch. So let's take a simple line like y equals x. And if I take this line and I let's say I wanted to shrink it. Shrink it would be like pushing down on it from above and the line might get lower. So I'm going to make a lower line. Imagine the blue line got pushed down and it became the red line. Well this red line has a slope of up 1 over 3, up 1 over 3. So its equation would be g of x equals 1 third x. The 1 third causes the function to have a vertical shrink. In this graph, I have the parent function, f of x equals the absolute value of x, and I'm going to make a stretch. So imagine if I took the graph and I kind of pulled it up. Stretching the graph up would make it narrower. Doing that mathematically might change a number in front of it to 4. So if this number, which was 1, gets changed to 4, now to make my new graph, I'm going to have to go up 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. And if I make it symmetric because it's an absolute value graph, all of a sudden I have a really steep V. That is considered to be a vertical stretch. Another common type of transformation is a reflection. And these problems can get hard, and I'll do a couple hard ones later, but this is a pretty easy one. So I have the parent function. So here's my parent. 
and the parent function is given by y equals x squared. And I'm going to change that function by making the number in front of x squared negative. That's going to take the graph and take a graph that was all positive numbers and make them negative. So 0 stays 0, but positive 1 becomes negative 1, positive 1 becomes negative 1, positive 4 becomes negative 4, positive 4 becomes negative 4, and the graph is turned upside down. A typical problem on the quiz will ask you to graph a, a function and its parent function. So when I look at this problem, I see the squared. The squared tells me it's in the quadratic family, so I graph the parent function first. This is a parabola. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, there's my parabola. This is considered the parent function. On your quiz, it will ask you to identify the parent function and graph the transformed function. First, I look inside. Remember, if the number is inside, it tells it if it moves to the right or the left. This graph is moved to the right one. I also have to look in front. The number in front is going to cause it to stretch. And if I were to think about spelling, nope. If I were to think about what would happen, if I had over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, but I times it by 2, it would now be over 1, up 2, over 2, up 8. And so this graph will get moved to the right one. Let's try that again. This graph will get moved to the right one. But instead of going over 1 and up 1, it's going to go over 1 and up 2. It's shifted right, and it has a vertical stretch. In this graph, the parent function is an absolute value function. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. It can't be negative, so it bounces off the x-axis. It looks like this. Here's the parent function. Now I'm going to graph the second function, f of x equals absolute value of x plus 2. This is inside the parentheses, so it's always going to move the opposite way you think it's going to move, so it'll move to the left, 2. This is, the 3 is after the function. It always moves the same way you think it will, so this is going to move up 3. So my transformed graph is going to take the point right here at 0, 0, move it to the left, 2, and up 3, and then I'm going to draw the exact same graph it's just translated to a new position. As you get to the back page of your quiz, you're going to have slightly harder problems, where it gives you an original function that's already transformed and asks you to do something crazy to it, like take that f function and move it left too. So the first f function is already to the right one and up four, right here. And then this g function, and remember if it's inside the parentheses, you go the opposite way. So we're going to take the function and move it to the left 5, but we're not going to take the parent family function to the left 5. We're going to take this function left 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here's where it lands. The transformation of this function Look at its vertex. Its vertex is now at negative 4, 4. So the function is now going to be given by f of x equals x plus 4 squared plus 4. Problems like this are going to be the hardest ones for you to do on the quiz. And a little bit of extra practice will get you through. Describe a transformation that will take this function, 
y equals 2x minus 3, which I have graphed in red, and reflect it over the, let's say, y-axis. Okay, if I were to reflect this over the y-axis, you can think of reflecting as folding. So the point at 2, 1 would go to negative 2, 1. The point at 3, 3 would go to negative 3, 3. This point would stay on the line. The new function would look like this. I always think of reflections as sort of looking like butterflies, but, you know, I can't really draw. Okay, ignoring the butterfly, the blue line is a reflection. And you have to ask yourself, well, how is the blue line different? The blue line has a negative slope. But the blue line has the same y-intercept. So if I were to write the equation of the blue line, it would just be y equals negative 2x minus 3. The bottom line for this chapter is you have to be able to graph a line, you have to be able to graph an absolute value, you have to be able to graph a quadratic, and you have to be able to transform them. So not only do you need to know that y equals x squared makes a parabola, but you also have to know that changing the number in front of x squared makes the parabola go upside down. Or that changing the number after the x squared makes the parabola move down. This could be a ton of Algebra 1 review or just a little bit. It all depends on how well you remember your algebra.